The path that we are going to explore today is vascular dementia. There are actually over 100 types of dementia. Vascular dementia, or VCI, vascular cognitive impairment, is the third most common. The first is Alzheimer's disease. The second is Lewy body dementia. And coming up in third place is vascular dementia. I'm often evaluating a person with dementia and I'm more often than I'd like very surprised at how many people who clearly have cognitive issues and are not diagnosed and they are not currently being seen by a neurologist. This is completely unimaginable to me. If you had a heart attack, you would be going to the cardiologist, right? If you had cancer, you would be seeing an oncologist, right? So we're talking about your brain. What can be more important than that? Your brain. I just don't get it. Why are we not going to a neurologist at the first signs of a deteriorating brain? Can someone, anyone, please tell me? What are we without our brain? Make the appointment. A really good neurologist can take months to get an appointment. All right, I'm done with my rant for now. <laughs> I'm Deborah Costu. I talk everything dementia. I can't get enough of this stuff. I love the brain and I love teaching and I love you. And I would love it if you would do me a favor and join our family by hitting that red subscribe button. Thanks. Let's talk about vascular dementia. Vascular dementia is caused by an inadequate supply of blood to the brain, which in turn causes cell death. It results in a decline in cognitive ability caused by a blockage or a reduction of the blood flow to various portions of the brain. So the delicate brain tissue is deprived of the oxygen and nutrients that it needs to survive. Our brains are particularly vulnerable to restricted blood flow. Let's talk about how this disruption in blood flow can happen. The most common is the result of a stroke or a series of TIAs or mini strokes. You can also be a victim of vascular dementia due to other circulatory conditions such as CHF, congestive heart failure, coronary artery disease, high blood pressure and diabetes, any condition that affects your blood vessels and circulation can result in vascular dementia. Unlike Alzheimer's and Lewy body's dementia, these dementias are caused by deposits of an irregular protein in the brain causing cell death, whereas vascular dementia is caused by diminished blood flow to the brain. After a person has been diagnosed with vascular dementia, the life expectancy on average is five years. Yeah, it's pretty short. Shorter than Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's average is about eight to nine years. The risk factors for vascular dementia are the same risk factors for stroke and heart disease. So remember, what's good for the heart is good for the brain. As we age, our risk goes up. So as you grow older, your risk increases. If you have had a heart attack or any kind of stroke, this greatly increases your risk. If you have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, or arterial sclerosis, this increases your risks of vascular dementia due to restricting your blood flow. If you're a diabetic, High glucose levels, uh, they damage your vessels, which increases your stroke risk. As with heart health, smoking and alcohol consumption expand your risk, and being overweight is considered a risk factor. If you have atrial fibrillation or AFib, where your heart beats irregularly and out of rhythm from your atrium and your ventricles, which are the upper and lower chambers of your heart. AFib causes blood clots to form in the heart that can dislodge and become mobile. 
traveling to other parts of your body, including your brain. My father, if he had lived long enough, I'm sure he would have suffered from vascular dementia. He went in several times to be shocked back into regular rhythm. He had AFib. He also had three open heart surgeries and congestive heart failure. Man, he hated those shocks. I'll tell you, they could never give him enough drugs to knock him out, so he was always awake for those experiences. There are basically two options for vascular dementia. If the dementia is caused by cardiovascular or diabetes, the progression of the cognitive decline will be more gradual. So a person would experience problems with thinking, memory, language like word finding, difficulty with organization, difficulty deciding what to do next, agitation, um, unsteady gait, that means walking, problems planning, poor balance, and the inability to show empathy. And when I say they have no empathy, the part of their brain that makes them care is no longer able to function. They have no desire for anything. It's not depression. They just don't want to. They don't want. And you can't make them. You can't help them want to care about themselves, others, or a situation. The other option is the result of a stroke. When the person experiences a stroke, their symptoms will appear more dramatic, like a step. So they'll have a sharp decline in cognitive functioning and then level off, kind of stay with those symptoms and at that cognitive level until the next stroke, and then they'll have another steep or sharp decline. And again, they'll level off like steps. When changes with a person's memory and thinking seem to be linked to a stroke, this condition is often referred to as post-stroke dementia. Vascular dementia symptoms vary from person to person because it's subjective to where in the brain the stroke occurs. It is common for a person to have vascular dementia simultaneously with Alzheimer's disease. They're often occurring together. This combo would be considered mixed dementia, and I promise to do a video on mixed dementia for you. A person can suffer from many strokes that do not have or cause any notable dementia symptoms. However, they are still increasing the risk of developing dementia. Another type of vascular dementia involving many or multiple strokes is called mini infarct dementia. When a person has a slower progression, perhaps due to many larger strokes or cardiac problems, the symptoms can mimic Alzheimer's disease. This decline could take years, which may also lead to a misdiagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's has a fairly predictable path of destruction through the brain, and Alzheimer's also has some fairly expected stages, but most other types of dementia do not. So the causes of vascular dementia result from preventing the blood vessels from delivering oxygen to the brain. A stroke or an infarction that blocks a vessel from doing its job can cause vascular dementia. Some strokes don't cause any noticeable dementia symptoms, but they will increase your risk. A brain hemorrhage or an aneurysm, often caused by high blood pressure, can weaken vessels leading to a rupture causing bleeding into the brain and causing damage and dementia. The doctor will make the best diagnosis based on symptoms that you and your family provide. Your medical history can help doctors make the appropriate diagnosis. And during fact finding, they might run lab tests like your cholesterol level, check your blood pressure, your glucose and sugar levels. The doctor or neurologist is likely to conduct some neurological exams, including testing your reflexes, observing your ability to get up from a chair and watch your gait, or rather, you know, how you walk. They will assess your balance and coordination. 
Doctors will get an overview of your strength and muscle tone and test the strength of one side of your body to the other. The doctors may also order brain imaging to help with the diagnosis process. Images of the brain can not only pinpoint abnormalities, but can also serve as a baseline or an important comparison reference as the disease progresses. Imaging of the brain can uncover tumors, trauma, and abnormalities such as strokes. An MRI uses radio waves and strong magnetic fields to take detailed images of the brain. The MRI makes a really loud banging noise and the patient is lying on a table that slides into a tubular shaped machine. These MRIs do not hurt at all, but you might feel claustrophobic. Also used are CT scans. So same as an MRI, you would lie on a table that also slides into the imaging machine as x-rays create cross-section images of your brain. A CT scan will show the atrophy or the shrinking of the brain. The last diagnostic tool is the neuropsychological testing. These tests will assess your ability to write, speak and understand language, learn and remember information, and see how you can work with numbers, assess if you are able to solve a problem or create a plan, and how you would respond to hypothetical situations. These neuropsychological tests are common for many different types of dementia. Those with vascular dementia may have more difficulty analyzing a problem and solution solving. Solution solving? Well, you get it. Um, people with vascular dementia will have less trouble learning information and remembering, which is more common with Alzheimer's disease. So once again, what's good for the heart is good for the brain. You could lower your risk of vascular dementia by keeping your blood pressure and your cholesterol in check, diet, regular cardio exercise, maintaining a healthy weight, and stay socially engaged, limit alcohol consumption, and play brain games. I sure hope you enjoyed being with me as much as I love being here with you. I'll see you next time. Hit that subscribe button just because I asked. Thanks. See ya. You know what? If you drop me a comment, you never know. I might just make a video just for you.